Good morning. I'm Lynn and welcome to another day at Utopia Farms. It's pretty quiet in here right now because everyone just got fed. This is the group that Looney's in and her mom's eating and you can see she's with her playmates climbing up the box. Ben finds this pen fascinating. There's Teeny. She's, she's a very possessive mom. She's calling for her lamb. So she, I see she's torn between going to look for her lamb and eating her food. Oh, there she goes. There you see, she's scattered all the other lambs out of the way, and she's feeding Looney now. So Toonie's turned into a good mom. Somebody asked if, if Looney and Toonie had a story, like how can we only have, have those two? Well, there is a story why we only have them. One one year we were breeding our dorsets and out, of uh, out of season, and and our ram, our dorset ram must have died or something. I don't remember who it was, but we we were short a ram, and we couldn't uh, get any other dorsets in the area. So we we knew of someone who had. Tunis sheep, so we were told that they breed out of season. So we brought that ram in and put him in with our Dorset ewes for out of season breeding. And the result was Tunis mom. And that was it. Nobody else got bred. <laughs> so, so we quickly got rid of him because he was of no use to us. Because we only wanted them for out of season breeding and obviously that didn't work without cedars and we don't use cedars so um toonie's mom was extremely cute so we kept her um she she left the farm i guess last year she blew her bag but uh, luckily she left us with toonie and now we have looney so we'll be keeping Toonie and Looney, just because they're uh, cute and they are actually really good confirmation and doing well. So they're a little talkative item, but uh, that's why that's why we have them here, and that's why we don't have a lot of them. They just didn't work for us on our farm. Hi, Tommy. our little guy with the broken leg he's up she it's a she she's up and walking around be very careful walking by the triplet pen because these guys are so little but as you can see there's the one with the broken leg and she's trying to nurse there so we're really keeping our fingers crossed on that one These are two new ones that just got born. Mom, you look a little stressed out. So you can see the brownish tinge on these guys. So I'm going to assume she's a grade. Because uh, the brownish tinge usually is a sign of a grade. These guys are crying because she, she's she got big nipples and, and she's got lots of milk. But they just can't figure it out. So I got to work on them today to show them how to suck off her big teats because she's not really a hard milker or anything. She loves the lamb. And these two, oh, 
They're a little chilly because they were just born. I just, I just had a, but you can see that this, uh, this sheep probably had a third man. Why? Because that is a, that is a, 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 a little bit of a rotten casino. Yeah, it looks. So I'm thinking that she had a third man and a boy. <laughs> Yeah, it's true. They're, her placenta has some brown, mucky, not nice stuff on it. And usually that's a sign that uh, she's absorbed a lamb or lost another lamb. Because these guys are really big and don't look to have any problems at all. So um, those kind of things happen sometimes. She just had them, so she's feeling a little stressed out right now, too. But no one's been fed, so it's really loud right now. This group of Suffolk are all lying in front of the open doorway to stay cool. And these guys are the ones that have the smaller udders. They're farther along, far, farther away from having a lamb. But we do have one at the back here that is lambing. So I'm in the midst of doing chores, but between fixing bottles, I keep coming back to check to make sure everything's okay. Do you have a lammy? Did you have a lammy? Well, it looks like you did. You did it when I wasn't even here to watch. How's it doing? It looks lovely. Yeah, we're gonna go have a look, okay? Hi. And I'm guessing she's gonna have another one because she doesn't have a placenta out or anything. But it's a bit mucky here, so I'm gonna put this lamb on the towel so it doesn't get too dirty. There you go. Sit there, buddy. I got it on a towel, so it's out of the mud, but she's pretty active, so she's not likely to stay there. She couldn't have picked a dirtier spot in the barn. Okay, so we're going to take her out of here, because it's a little mucky, and get her into a jug. checked her milk. She's got lots of milk. So we're just gonna put some clean straw in a jug and get her in there. So we were really busy this morning. I had to get all the lambs tagged because of that wave the other day. There was a whole bunch that needed tagging like this guy here who's a real humdinger. And um we decided we're gonna bring another group of suffix over to the coveralls. So as I'm waiting for Arnie to get here with the trailer, I'm gonna set up the gates and stuff so we can get these guys out of here. And now the girls turn. Watch out, watch out. It's a lot fuller now. And we're gonna go let a bunch more out of jugs too. Snuggled in the hay. Pre-dinner trimming. Whoa. You gotta watch your face, cause sometimes they can kick you in the head. Right, Arnie? You have to have a head on to have a shirt. Okay, so Arnie is implying that he doesn't have a head. Okay, 
So we're going to let these guys out. Two little girls. Going to join the family pen. And these are probably the last ones that are going to go into the family pen to fill up the next group of 30 in the cover up. These are two nice ewe lambs from Geronimo. Freedom. Two more here that are waiting for their mom. They're in the waiting pen. Arnie's just finishing mommy up. This girl's more Britishy type, but we put and we put a taller ram on her. I think Jethro was the dad of these ones. Up there, honey. Up to the dog. It looks kind of scary with Max standing there. There they go. They're gonna wait here. We might give them some extra straw. We've been pretty busy the last couple of days with items not involved with sheep farming, although we've been doing the sheep farming at the same time. So getting footage has been a little more difficult today. So we're gonna make this a short one. Right now I'm, I was just giving the broken leg little lamb a little bit of a bottle. And on the other side of the jug where I'm sitting, these are the Dorset ewes in their pen, eating their dinner. Hi. That looks yummy. And then in the next jug over, these are the ones that were born this morning. She just lay down after having her supper and she's going to chew her cud. Her lambs look to be doing really well. You're very pretty, honey. So, you know, you guys know we've been having a rat problem. We tried the friendly way of catching them with a ramp in a bucket. That didn't work at all. So the last few weeks we've been using rat poison on them and it has been controlling the situation quite a bit. And we're almost down to a manageable amount, but we ran out of the poison, so we had to order more. But now we can't order more because to, ha to get rat poison nowadays, you require a special license, which means we have to go take a course on chemicals and chemical course. Chemical course. course. So <laughs> that doesn't help us now. So we called them the feed store and asked if there was any other type of rat poison we could give them that didn't require a course and they said yeah they did have some um, uh, they said they had a couple of boxes left over and we said we'll just take it all because um, we used quite a lot of rat poison to kill it and the the shipment just arrived and we it, in the past do you have an example of that poison that we had before is there any here Barbie. yeah it was called barb whip bait tastes real, tastes real good in the hot dog bun and it looks like it's a stick like that. And you can imagine how many rats would have to nibble that for that all to get eaten, like a lot. And we had like several hundred of those. Wow. Okay. You had a whole box, Arnie. How many were in each box? In each oh, packet? This? Yeah. Oh, a whole box? Yeah, $50 worth. 
Yeah, but there was like hundreds. Yeah, probably 15 pounds. So, <laughs> this is what they sent today. Okay, so what's happened is, I can't buy this without a spraying course, but I can buy, I can buy this rat trap. Okay, so I get the trap, they're, 11, they're $12 a piece, and I read the label here, and it says it's child and dog proof. I can understand the dogs eating rat poison when you lay it out on the floor and the dog eats it, but we never do that. We always put the rat poison down the holes. We don't lay it in the middle of the floor that birds and the hawks and every other animal can eat it, or even Lynn could eat it. So I'm going to guess with, with the kids, they've got the kids here, so I'm going to guess... Yeah, there's a possibility you could lay this around the cover all, and your child's walking around on all fours eating the rat poison right behind you. That could be a problem. I mean, you've got to wonder what kind of parent would have to have a child at that point. So this is what they send us. And one part you didn't mention is they told us they were sending us rat poison, not a rat trap. We didn't order a rat trap. We ordered rat poison. Okay. okay. So this is what they send me. Got a little box here. Plastic. Okay, well, let's, we'll look into that for a second. So we're gonna lay, I guess we're gonna lay this on the floor and the rat's gonna go in here. And uh, so you see this, you see this bar bait that I'm not allowed to have anymore without, uh, without proving that I have some intelligence to operate it. But there it is right there. It's right in there, see, there it is. Just a tiny little morsel in that whole thing. So it, they say it could kill. They said on the box it would kill 10 rats. Well, I don't know what survey did that. Because I'm going to think a rat's going to gorge out on that. But the real worst part about this, with all the global warming and all the garbage in the world today, why wouldn't you have a little door there where I could slip in a new piece of bait for it and keep using the same trap? But they actually want me to throw it out because if you can't pass a spraying horse, you're kind of dumb, probably, and you can't have this in your possession. Because you might eat it in a hot dog bun. And and so you're throwing the plastic away, garbage. There's way less poison there. And it's the same poison by the look of it, but we can't touch it because it's sealed in a box. It's ridiculous. Like, I, have... I see it for a house, someone's house. But you guys know, this and is a major farm with major rat problem. And I'm going to guess that somebody from the city that doesn't even know what a rat is has invented that. It's so impractical. It's, so, it's uh, honestly, you've okay. got to wonder about this. So that's what we got today. So obviously we got to send this back because this is not good for well, us. Well, I'm going to try it, I guess. Try it, Arnie. Well, that's a waste of money. Are we going to take the spraying license? Yes. Anyway, as you can see, it's getting dark, and I've got dinner to make. I don't feel like it, but it's that time of day. So, thank you for watching. I hope you join us again tomorrow for the next episode at Utopia Farms. Bye for now.